Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. It's time to review Relic, the new film just released on demand. It's uh, six or seven bucks, depending on where you get it. Directed by Natalie Erica James. I believe this is her debut feature. This is an Australian film, a horror film that I saw at Sundance, and I haven't stopped hyping it up since then, because in my opinion, this movie sits comfortably. When I think of the best horror movies of like the last five years or so, I think Relic is like among them. Really? That's high praise. Opinion. Yeah, I just think it's one of like the really, really good ones for me. I mean, if if, if only a few really good horror films come out a year, then yeah, definitely. I mean, this well, is... Well, that's the case, isn't it? Yeah, like this is, this is top three horror films of the year for sure. And this is a movie I would say, even if you don't like love it personally, it's very interesting and you should watch it anyway. Like, even if you watch this and it's like a seven to you, it's still worth it because... It has like interesting depth. Now this is not really like the scariest movie. It definitely wouldn't rank among scariest movies I've ever seen. It definitely unsettles you and it makes you think about topics that are unpleasant. Occasionally it can be a little scary. The last third has some moments that are like pretty creepy and uh, very weird. I can't even spoil them for you, but I actually would have to disagree with you there on that it not being scary. I felt like it was very creepy and it's definitely more scary to me than films that like really go for scares i mean it doesn't have any like real pop out things happening for like a really long time i'm not even sure it ever has one of those no, but i don't think it has jump scares like there's it has like things lurking and like in in the frame that you're scared of but they're unaddressed and it makes it really creepy it's not like a total creep show or anything and especially what you said the third act I actually did feel like it got very creepy. If a horror film is unsettling, to me that's even better than it being scary. I agree, and that's why I love this movie. But if you're someone who goes into horror movies and you want scares strictly, you won't like it's it. It's not a sleepover horror movie. I, no, I mean, I'll is... agree with you, but I don't, I, I'm just not going to say it's not scary because I actually did think, like, by definition and the way that it made me feel, it was scary. If you hate it, it comes at night. You're not going to like this one either. Yeah, yeah. You that's understand? A good, that's a good way to like, gauge it's it. kind of like that movie. It's definitely a slow burn, too. Yeah. It tests patience a little bit. There are scenes where you feel like not much has happened in, like, the past few minutes. But I will yeah. say, if you're, like, on the on the fence about this movie for most of the runtime, stick with it. Because the last third is absolutely phenomenal. And it has the best ending I've ever seen in a horror movie. Because I can't think of a better one. Because a lot of horror movie yeah. endings suck. A lot of horror not, movie not endings Not that there haven't been any other better horror movies, just that a lot of horror movie endings suck. Yeah, even like my some of my favorite horror movies, like Hereditary, like the ending is my is only the weakest problem point with for me. the movie. Weakest point. The reason for that is a lot of times horror movies expend like the scary things in the beginning or the middle, which is very understandable. But this movie really lays it all out on there in the end. I was happy with the movie being that way because when it ended, I was just so like unsettled. I was moved. This is like definitely one of the most emotional horror movies that you'll yeah, see. Yeah. Because yeah, unexpectedly too. Yeah. You're not going to see anything that happens in the third act coming. And yeah. some of it will like creep into you in ways that you don't like. And they will like invade your brain and make you think unpleasant thoughts about like <laughs> taking care of loved ones. Because this is a movie that is like about family and death and decay. I, I actually realized something as you were talking about the ending and why it's good. The reason why the ending of this movie is so much better than other horror movies is because I feel like this is a trend with horror movies for me. The Lodge was a huge this Hereditary was a little bit this. They have a sort of crossroads that they reach where they could lean into like the surrealism of it, or they can say, we're gonna wrap it in a bow, like provide an explanation for like why this stuff is happening. And this movie leans into the surrealism like really hard. And I was like, this is what I want. This is what I want from yes. movies. This is what I want from horror films. Like I want every horror film to like do that. And The Lodge really frustrated me with that because if it leaned into like the more abstract and, and just like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is very psychological. I would have really liked The Lodge, but it didn't do that. And Relic absolutely did that. And it goes there and you're like, whoa, it actually it like really went there. There's some surreal shit with production design and makeup. I, that's all I'll say. It like is a surrealist film. It's not David Lynch, but it's like slowly rising to be something 
like that. But in my opinion, it wasn't difficult to interpret like what it was trying to do because it'll just affect you the way that it wants to because I feel like it's hitting primal instincts. You know, yeah. the, the, the connection fears. that you feel to family members like is something that everybody has. Yeah. I hope. The first time I saw this movie, I was like very disturbed by it. I was like genuinely uh, upset by this movie. And the second time was also upsetting, but it, you know, it didn't have like the, the whoa, like I did not see that coming and slapping me in the face like that. But it was still a really good second watch. And I feel like I got a little more out of the slower parts in the first half than on the second viewing. Because on the first viewing, I didn't know what this was, what to expect. Mm. And so there were some parts in the beginning where I was like, well, I don't know like how much I need to be involved in this movie because I don't know what it's doing for me yet. But then yeah, once the third act hits, I'm like, I was immediately immediately interested and for the rest of the movie it's a movie that when i finished it i was like i would like to watch that again i would definitely see this movie again which is a great sign i think it means that it left something open for you to mull over i guess i would say if there was a complaint to be made about the movie i think a lot of people would have this that it takes a long time to get going and it's just so much meteor in the last part that it kind of makes the first part like pale in comparison but I do think the first part did a good job with creating atmosphere and eeriness. Like, I thought the camera work was really good. It definitely had that cold, like, conjuring kind of lighting, but it had a different feel to it. So it, it leaned into that horror look. It did a good job with the tone and everything, but as far as the story goes, like, not that much was really happening or building. Maybe that could have been more full, but I have to really watch it again to see how I feel about the first part of the movie. I think that I watched it a little more as like a drama the second time. I think that mm. you have to be willing to watch something that is both a drama and a horror film to like enjoy this, or you have to like movies that are like that. In a way, if this was shot differently, if this was shot with just long, unbroken wide shots, it would be kind of like a, a Michelle Hanukkah film. It would be kind of like Amour. And Amour is a movie that's sort of like, in a way, it ha it's kind of a dreadful film because it's dealing with like fucking death and stuff. Yeah, it may and, be and getting like old, that. It may be and it like has that. like that tone. And so, if you, I, I feel like if you watch it as a slow burn, like serious kind of morbid drama, then you might enjoy it more. And I think that the performances are very good. Emily Mortimer, especially, who plays the yeah. uh, the mother. Both of them actually were like equally good, almost. To like me. But but she was but she was probably the standout. I would yeah. say. Yeah, I mean and the like, grandma. Yeah, the grandma's all, good too. You know, yeah, all of them. It's not like a hereditary level like technically impressive movie although it is yeah. like very well directed and it had I think, a lower budget like for yeah sure. the voice of the filmmaker is very significant like yeah. at the end of the film it like there's a loud voice there i'm very excited to see whatever natalie erica james does next i can definitely see her going like away from horror movies this movie gave me a very unique feeling the ending is like very terrifying and also like kind of beautiful yeah and that mixture like that's the mixture that you want, folks. Like, that is what you want. I think people are going to put in the context of, like, this is coming after The Babadook, which is another Australian horror film, also directed by a woman. That makes it a little more interesting, too. Like, you have another, like, really great horror film coming out of Australia. You know, you were saying, like, they recruit these directors for bigger projects. Well, Jennifer Kent, her next movie was The Nightingale. <laughs> And it's just so, it's just so much less accessible than the Babadook. And yeah, I mean, I saw that film. I didn't review it, but like, oh shit! I mean, people ran out of my like, literally ran. It was like, we need to go fast. We need to get out of here, and we need to do it fast because I don't want to watch what's happening on the screen. I don't even know if I can recommend the movie. Just like, just like, know what you're getting into. But I mean, I would hope that the director kind of does a similar thing where she leans into like what she really wants to do after this. I hope she can get a bigger budget off it. It's like a movie that I would recommend to film buffs. Not people looking for just like a horror film to rent and watch with like casually, but it is definitely like a contender for horror film of the year. I, I loved Invisible Man, so but they're really hard to compare. Really hard to compare. I like Relic a little more than the Invisible Man. The Invisible Man was a more satisfying watch for me, obviously, yeah. but Relic is like it could it could stay under there. So they're they're good for different things. But we also you know I'm really excited other horror films this year with Candyman, Annabellum, Annabellum. Maybe. Yeah, sure, Annabellum. We'll see. You'll see. You'll see. I am going 9 out of 10 on Relic. I would also give this a 9 out of 10. You know, we're, we're eating. It's July. We're, we're eating good. It's There's coronavirus, but weekend. we are eating this weekend. And First Cow is coming up soon. The feel-good movie of this weekend, Palm Springs. The feel, not sure how you feel, but it's not a good thing. You feel pretty bad. The feel-depressed movie of this weekend, Relic.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Are you more scary or sad?